All right. Canal Street here with the April 1995 issue of Vibe Magazine and the breakdown of the Tupac jailhouse interview from when he was on Rikers Island awaiting sentencing. And I'm only breaking down one part of this. I'm decoding one part and I'll show you why and how. All right. So here we go. Now, I'll show you how it starts off. It was a chilly January morning when I made my way to Rikers Island for a conversation with Tupac Shakur. Just so we're clear, because I always like to break down dates of when shit happened. This is from January 1995 when Tupac was on Rikers awaiting sentencing for the sex charges. So I'm just going to jump right into the events leading up to the quad robbing and shooting. So here we go. Vibe goes, can you take us back to that night at Quad Recording Studios in Times Square? Pac goes, the night of the shooting? Sure. Ron G is a DJ out here in New York. He's like, Pac, I want you to come to my house and lay this rap down for my tapes. I said, all right, I'll come for free. So I went to his house, me, Stretch, and a couple other homeboys. If you're familiar with that song, that's uh, representing for Ron G mixtape track. And they use those vocals for the Deadly Combination song. Continuing on, Pac goes, After I laid the song, I got a page from this guy, Booker, telling me he wanted me to rap on Little Sean's record. Booker is Jimmy Henchman. That's Jimmy Henchman's nickname. For the two street dudes he really talks about in here, he uses their aliases. So, moving forward. Now, this guy I was going to charge because I could see that they was just using me. So I said, all right, you give me seven G's and I'll do the song. He said, I've got the money, come. I stopped off to get some weed and he paged me again. Where you at? Why you ain't coming? I'm like, I'm coming, man, hold on. The vibe asks, do you know this guy? Pop goes, I met him through some rough characters I knew. He was trying to get legitimate and all that. So I thought I was doing him a favor. But when I called back for directions, he was like, I don't have the money. I said, if you don't have the money, I'm not coming. He hung up the phone, then called me back. I'm going to call Andre Harrell, who was the CEO of Uptown Entertainment at the time, and make sure you get the money. But I'm going to give you the money out of my pocket. So, so right there, he was probably going to give him some cash and the rest of the payment he was going to get from Andre Harrell. Then Pac goes, I said, all right, I'm on my way. As we're walking to the building, somebody screamed from up top of the studio. It was Little C's, Biggie Sideman. That's my homeboy. As soon as I saw him, all my concerns about the situation were relaxed. Now, Vibe asks, so you're saying that going into it? And Pac says, I felt nervous because this guy knew somebody I had major beef with. I didn't want to tell the police, but I can tell the world. Nigel had introduced me to Booker. Nigel is Haitian Jack. That's one of Haitian Jack's many aliases. And also in the All Eyes on Me movie, the character Nigel, that's who he was playing. And Booker, we know is Jimmy Henchman. So this line that Pac saying translates, decodes to this pretty much. Haitian Jack had introduced me to Jimmy Henchman. Pretty interesting, right? Now listen to what Pac says. Everybody knew I was short on money. All my shows were getting canceled. All my money from my records was going to lawyers. All the movie money was going to my family. So I was doing this type of stuff, rapping for guys and getting paid. Now Vibe asks, who's this guy, Nigel? So this question is, who's this guy, Haitian Jack? Pac goes, I was kicking it with him the whole time I was in New York doing Above the Rim. He came to me, he said, I'm going to look after you. You don't need to get in no more trouble. Now, Vibe asks, doesn't Nigel also go by the name of Trevor? Pac goes, right. There's a real Trevor, but Nigel took on both aliases. You understand? I'm not going to go deeper into that because that has to do with the rape case. So we'll leave that alone. Why Haitian Jack had that alias also. So Pac keeps going. So that's who I was kicking it with. I got close to them. I used to dress in baggy jeans and sneakers. They took me shopping. 
That's when I bought my Rolex and all my jewels. They made me mature. They introduced me to all these gangsters in Brooklyn. I met Nigel's family, went to his kid's birthday party. I trusted him, you know what I'm saying? I even tried to get Nigel in the movie. <laughs> That's funny because Pac tried to get Haitian Jack in Above the Rim. And then Pac goes, but he didn't want to be on film. That bothered me. I don't know any dude that doesn't want to be in movies. So after this, he goes into the play-by-play -play of the shooting at Quad. And I don't think anybody wants to hear me read all these fucking paragraphs about shit they probably already know if you're watching this video. So, real quick, I want to do a timeline of shit leading up to this, and then I'm going to revisit it. So, November 1993, Tupac catches the rape case in which Haitian Jack is arrested with Pac. Fast forward to a year later, November 16th, 1994, in the Daily News, Tupac calls Haitian Jack a hanger-on. Two weeks later, November 30th, 1994, that's when Tupac is set up, robbed, and shot at Quad Studios in Manhattan. Now, going back to everything I just read you, you know Pac was short on money because he had a whole bunch of fucking, he had cases going on, a whole bunch of shit. So Pac was short on money. So Jimmy Henchman hits him up to do a song. You see how much Pac is talking about how they went back and forth with money. I've heard that this wasn't the smoothest conversation, if you know what I mean. So he might have been talking a little reckless to Jimmy Henchman. So if Jimmy Henchman feels like he's being talked to a certain type of way from Pac, and it's pissing him off. He may also be like, ain't you disrespected my man in the daily news two weeks ago? Yo, come down here and rob this motherfucker. I know where he gets his jewelry and all this shit is legit. Plus he's overcharging me for this fucking song. That could be a theory right there. So if you ask me what I think, do I think Jimmy Henchman had Pac set up? Yes. I think that they were just supposed to rob him. I don't think it was supposed to be, you know, it was a robbery term bad. I don't think they were trying to kill him or shoot him. Do I think Haitian Jack has something to do with it? Nah. I'll put a link in the comments to a couple Haitian Jack interviews for you guys to check out. But Haitian Jack doesn't even like Jimmy Henchman anymore. And he said that even though Pac said what he said in the Daily News, he didn't feel like it was something that warranted him to be disciplined. They were friends at one time. Do I think Biggie and Puffy and Bad Boy has something to do with it? Nah, I don't think so. Did they maybe catch wind of it that night? Possibly. They could have heard something in the studio. You know, they kind of could have caught or even caught wind of it on their own. Do I think that they know who did it afterwards? Absolutely. I think they definitely know who robbed and shot Pac afterwards or who was behind it. Maybe not the actual people that did it, but who was behind it. I think they definitely know who was behind it. So that's pretty much it, man. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope uh, you enjoy it. You know, the gem in this was the daily news article because i knew Pac said haitian jack was a hanger on in the daily news but i never knew when he said it and i never seen the article until i discovered it while i was making this video so another little gem for you guys to enjoy and uh hopefully this cleared up some things for you everybody got their own theory on um but i try to just go i try to take all the facts and balance it out for you guys and then present it to you like that so until next time, it's Canal Street. Peace.